Uh, my name is Jamon. Um, I'm a uh, work here on campus. Let's go to the passage. That was written by uh, Frederick Douglass. Uh, give you some background on who Frederick Douglass is. Uh, Frederick Douglass, uh, born in, in 1818, died in 1895. He was a slave, an orator, an outer biographer, an editor, an activist, a statesman. Was the most famous African American of the 19th century. More than any other black man, he was responsible for the downfall of slavery, for the enlistment of black troops in the Union Army, and in the last few years of his life, for the awakening of the American people to the realization that Southern blacks had lost almost everything gained that they made during the Civil War and Reconstruction. Oh. And here's a story from this book called uh, From My Bondage and My Freedom. When the time of my departure was decided upon, my grandmother, knowing my fears and in pity for them, kindly kept me ignorant of the dreaded event about to transpire. Up to the morning, a beautiful summer morning, when we were to start, and indeed during the whole journey, a journey which a child I was, I remember as well as if it were yesterday, she kept the sad fact hidden from me. This reserve was necessary, for could I have known all, I should have given grandmother some trouble in getting me started. As it was, I was helpless, and she, dear woman, led me along by the hand, resisting with the reserve and solemnity of a priestess, all my inquiring looks to the last. The distance from Tuckahoe to the Wye River, where, where my old master lived, was a full 12 miles, and the walk was quite a severe test for the endurance of my young legs. The journey would have proved too severe for me, but that my dear old grandmother, blessings on her memory, afforded occasional relief by toting me on her shoulder. My grandmother, though advanced in years, as was evident from more than one gray hair which peeped from between the ample and graceful folds of her newly ironed bandana turban, was yet a woman of power and spirit. She was marvelous, straight in figure and elastic and muscular. I seemed hardly to be a burden to her. She would have toted me further, but that I felt myself too much a man to allow it and insisted on walking. As the day advanced, the heat increased, and it was not until the afternoon that we reached the much dreaded end of the journey. I found myself in the midst of a group of children of many colors, black, brown, copper colored, and nearly white. I had not seen so many children before. Great houses loomed up in different directions, and a great many men and women were at work in the fields. All this hurry, noise, and singing was very different from the stillness of Tuckahoe. As a newcomer, I was an object of special interest. And after laughing and yelling around me and playing all sorts of wild tricks, they, the children, asked me to go out and play with them. This I refused to do, preferring to stay with Grandma. I could not help feeling that our being there boded no good to me. Grandma looked sad. She was soon to lose another object of affection, as she had lost me before. I knew she wasn't happy, and a shadow fell from her brow on me, though I knew not the cause. All suspense, however, must have an end and the end of mine in this instance was at hand. Affectionately patting me on the head and exhorting me to be a good boy, Grandma told me to go play with the children. They are akin to you, she said. Go and play with them. Among a number of cousins were Phil, Tom, Steve, Jerry, Nance, and Betty. Grandmother pointed out my brother, Perry, and my sister, Sarah, and my sister, Elisa, who stood up in the group. I had never seen my brother nor my sisters before. And though I had sometimes heard of them, I felt a curious interest in them. I really did not understand what they were to me or I to them. We were brothers and sisters, but what of that? Why should they be attached to me or I to them? Brothers and sisters were by blood, but slavery had made us strangers. I really wanted to play with my brothers and sisters, but they were strangers to me. I was full of fear that grandmother might leave without taking me with her. We treated to do so, however, and that too by my dear grandmother. I went to the back part of the house to play with them and the other children. Play, however, I did not, but still with my back against the wall, witnessing the playing of others. At last, while standing there on the while standing there, one of the children who had been in the kitchen ran up to me in a roguish glee, exclaiming, Fed, Fed, Grandma me gone, Grandma me gone. I could not believe it. Yet fearing the worst, I ran into the kitchen to see for myself and found it even so. Grandma me had indeed gone and was now far away, clean out of sight.
I need not tell all that happened now. Almost heartbroken at the discovery, I fell upon the ground and wept the boy's bitter tears, refusing to be comforted. My brothers and sisters came around me and said, don't cry, and gave me peaches and pears, but I flung them away and refused all their kindly advances. I had never been deceived before, and I felt not only grieved at parting, as I suppose forever, was my grandmother, with my grandmother, but indignant that a trick had been played upon me in a matter so serious. It was late in the afternoon. The day had been exciting and a wearisome one. And I knew not how or where, but I suppose I sought myself to sleep. There is a healing in the angel wing of sleep, even for the slave boy. And its balm was never more welcome to any wounded soul than it was to mine. The first night I spent at the domicile of old master. The reader may be surprised that I narrate so minutely an incident apparently so trivial and which must have occurred when I was not more than seven years old. But, as I wish to give a faithful history of my experience in slavery, I cannot withhold a circumstance which at the time affected me so deeply. Besides, this was, in fact, my first introduction to the realities of slavery. Okay, hey, Legend of Mexico. <laughs> Okay, hi everyone, my name is Martha, and the legend I'm going to talk to you guys about today is from Mexico. It's actually called La Llorona. Many of you have, might have heard of it. It's called The Weeping Woman. And this story, I've heard about it ever since I was a little girl. I was haunted by it by my parents, and every Hispanic parent haunts their children with this. Because The Weeping Woman, she fell in love with a man, and he didn't like kids. So he told her, the only way I will marry you so what she did is she walked to the river and she drowned two of her children. No, it was a boy and a girl. And she returns to the man and the man didn't want her anymore. So pretty much she killed herself because she was so depressed that she killed her children and she didn't have the man she loved. And she when she tried entering the gates of heaven, God denied her. He said, no, you murdered your children so you forever will be on earth. And um, she's forever on earth weeping for her children. And she's... Um, Legend is that you can hear her at night in the river. You hear her weep. She's always like, like you can hear the wind blow around the river. And um, this legend is told to children. This is what I read. That it serves both ways for parents to value their children. You know, value your children over anything else because they came from you as women. And um, as children, they tell the story to kids so they can be obedient with their parents, you know, don't be out at late hours, you know, listen to your parents, because then, like, you're not going to come. Like, when I was little, when I went to Mexico, um, there's a river where my mom lives. She would always tell me not to get near it because La Llorona was there. And I've always believed it. And at night, we do hear the wind blow, and it sounds really weird. And I think it's in my head, but it is kind of crazy. And then um, this story was compared to a Greek mythology. It was with Zeus and Hera. Turns out Zeus had an affair with some a goddess or a demigoddess named Lamia. And Hera, she forced Lamia to eat her children. And then um, Lamia, she, out of jealousy, because she was jealous that Hera was Zeus's wife, she, um, she just started eating all the demi. Do you guys know what demigods are? You know, like Hercules, a human a god. So she would eat all of the demigods' children in revenge for Hera. So yeah, and like this story is told in many parts of the world. They have different versions of it, but this is the version I need when I grew up. Thank you. Gotta take some audience participation because there's a lot of rhythm to this. So,
Spartan. And this is every clan in Scotland has a Spartan. But if that wasn't uh, originally, it wasn't for the clans. Originally, the Association of Names of Spartan Designs came about as a result of the industrialization of wearing of the uh, weaving industry. So that it was just like an accessory. It was just different patterns, different colors, just you know different ways to wear it. And then clans decided that they wanted their own. So then they started picking their own. So this is from my clan, the McLean clan in Scotland. Um, and yeah, that's all. Thank you.